Today we're starting a new series looking at the basic tools and skills that every new machinist needs to be successful in the shop. And we're going to start with the one process that arguably has a greater impact on productivity and safety than anything else you can learn. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. I've been getting comments for years asking me to do a series on basic shop skills for new machinists, and it's something that I haven't tackled until today. So if you've been asking for that, this video is for you. I think the best place to begin is at the beginning, and everything, at least everything good, begins with coffee, specifically espresso. Now I know, I know, there are a lot of cultures out there, the world is a big place, and there are a lot of cultures that are based around tea instead of coffee. And if you're from one of those places, I would invite you to just sit back, relax, and have a good chuckle at just how complicated we've managed to make something simple like coffee. Maybe I'll tackle tea in a future episode. And if you're from Italy, my apologies in advance, just feel free to go down and rage in the comments about how Americans are ruining everything that was once good. This is my shop espresso setup. There's a lot of stuff here and we'll talk about it all, but let's start by talking about the espresso machine itself. Now the espresso machine has three goals. It needs to heat water to a specific temperature. It needs to pressurize that water to a specific pressure, usually around nine bars, and it needs to force that hot water under pressure through a bed of ground coffee. And it does that with the group head. Now the group head consists of a shower screen and there's a valve system to deliver the water and spread it out and have it fall over the bed of coffee. And that bed of coffee goes in a portafilter. This is a standard 58 millimeter portafilter and it consists of the holder with a couple of spouts and a basket. And the basket is a pressed stainless steel basket and you can see that it has a very, very fine mesh of holes that are machined very precisely in the bottom so that the water will flow evenly through the coffee and be distributed evenly through these holes. Because the last thing that you wanna do is have the, the water channel through the puck and not travel through all of the coffee evenly because then you will over extract portions and under extract other portions and you'll have a, a very difficult time getting a consistent good tasting shot. Now, this particular basket is not the one that came with this machine. This is an American style, I guess I would say, 18 gram basket. Your traditional Italian espresso single would be about seven grams and a double would be about 14 grams of coffee. This is designed to hold 18 grams of coffee, which is more typical here in America. And um, the, in fact, this one does a very nice job in this machine, I find, with about 20 grams with the particular grind and bean that I use. This particular machine is a Ranchilio Silvia. And this is sort of in the class of machines that most um, uh, most people who value espresso would consider kind of the minimum credible class. There are several machines in this class, but if you want a real, i.e. non-pressurized portafilter and the control that you need to make a good shot of espresso, this is sort of the class of machine that you're looking for at the entry level. There is essentially no limit to the amount of money you can spend on coffee gear, uh, look up James Hoffman on YouTube and see how deep the rabbit hole goes. But this particular machine I found to be good enough to get good results in the home shop without being completely crazy. Now, this particular machine was something that Ranchilio created originally, the story goes, as a promotional item for their distributors. They took the group head portafilter system from their big commercial machines and put it in a small package with a small boiler and made a little uh, countertop, you know, home kitchen style machine. And it was intended just as a novelty, but there was so much demand for it that they ended up making it as a commercial offering and you can buy them still today, many, many years later. This particular one has been modified. It has a PID controller in it to better control the temperature of the water in the boiler. These normally have a bimetal strip uh, thermostat in them and the temperature just cycles up and down, but the temperature cycles by several degrees when it does that. 
So you have to control the timing if you really want to control the temperature in the shot. Uh, but this machine just holds it within one degree of the set point because it has the PID microprocessor controller on it. And then this PID controller also provides the ability to automatically time the shots as well. And this particular one was integrated by Seattle Coffee Gear. They installed the PID controller, but you can buy these and put them on the machine yourself or on any uh, low-end espresso machine. And you can do that yourself, or in this case, I just bought it pre-integrated. The other major piece of equipment that you need to make espresso is a grinder. And yes, you can buy coffee pre-ground. There are a few problems with that. One is that the moment you grind it and break up the coffee, you are increasing the surface area and you're allowing the volatile compounds to evaporate out of the coffee. And you're also allowing oxygen to get to the coffee and start the staling process. So you're really best off grinding the beans right before you pull your shots. And the other benefit of that is that then you have control of the grind and you can use that as a variable to dial in your shots. So if they're pouring a little bit too fast, you can make the grind finer. If they're pouring a little too slow or choking, you can make the grind coarser. And that's a key element of being able to dial in the coffee and be able to pull a good quality shot. This particular grinder, has a bunch of grind settings. You just pull down the latch and twist the top. And this is a Ranchilio Rocky. And this is, again, kind of the minimum credible class of grinder that I would see for grinding espresso. There are a whole bunch of burr grinders out there that will grind something that they call espresso. But what I've found is that the grind on those tends to be too coarse. They'll work in a uh, pressurized portafilter machine with a valve, like a low-end consumer machine. But once you go to a real portafilter with a screen and a real basket without a pressurizing valve, you really need to grind quite a bit finer to get a good quality espresso. And this is sort of the class of grinder that will do that. Now you can see that I have this set to, I believe this is setting number three of 30, and zero is, you know, burrs touching. So this is just barely adequate, I would say. I can get some decent shots out of this by controlling some of the other variables, but I don't have a lot of control of the grind because if I go from setting three to setting two, that is a huge percentage change in the grind size or go from three to four. It's pretty coarse. And so if you look at the reviews on this, you'll see people saying, yes, it works. Yeah, I'd rather have finer control of the grind settings. And there are other grinders that will do that for you. And again, it's usually a matter of price. And there is, once again, virtually no limit to how much money you can spend on coffee grinders. Let's talk about the rest of the tools here. So I've got a scale, and this is uh, an Akaya Lunar. This is a you know relatively high-end, small espresso scale. And the point of using a scale is that you really need to weigh everything. Measuring beans by volume is gonna vary by roast. It's gonna vary by the, the specific grower and the season. You really need, in order to know how much coffee you've got, you need to weigh it. And the same is true of the water. As you're pulling the shot to measure how much you're actually putting it through, volume isn't really enough because you get foam on top of the coffee when you make espresso. That's carbon dioxide from the beans, from the beans that gets dissolved in the water and then comes out in the coffee and comes to the top and puts a head on it, you know, much like a, like a beer would have or a soda with foam coming out of it. And that will alter the volume if you're trying to measure it by volume. And so you really need to measure by, you measure the mass of the water coming out so that you know exactly what you're getting and you can control your brew ratio. The rest of this is about mechanically manipulating the coffee. So when I grind, I grind directly into the portafilter and this is just a stainless steel ring that fits on the top as a funnel to make sure the grounds go in here and not all over the counter. And then this is a tamper, which as you can imagine is used to compress the coffee puck and tamp it. Now this particular one is uh, spring loaded. So see if I can do this with my thumbs. It has some travel in it 
And the point of this is so that you can get a consistent tamp. When you put this down and then actually tamp your coffee, if you're gonna control your variables so that you can make fine adjustments to dial something in, you have to always use the same tamp or you'll change one variable, but the tamp will be different and that'll change other variables and you'll have a very difficult time dialing it in. So just like using a torque wrench to make sure that your fasteners are, are correct, this is a, uh, the torque wrench of the coffee tamper world so that you can press down and when it doesn't really click, but when it bottoms, you know that you put, in this case, about 30 pounds of force, uh, maybe what, what, around 15 kilos of force on the puck. And the exact amount of force you use doesn't matter as much as it matters that that force be consistent every time so that you can dial in the other variables without having your tamp be a confounding variable that makes it difficult to do that. Now I have a couple more tools here that are not strictly necessary, but that can make your life a lot easier. This is called a needle distributor. And all this is, is just a handle with some stainless steel needles on it. The idea being that once you have your coffee grounds in the portafilter, you can use this to stir it up and break up the clumps and fluff the coffee. And this is useful for getting a nice even puck. Now, I have found that with my particular grinder and the particular beans that I use, that this isn't really necessary and it tends to make a little bit more of a mess. But depending on exactly what you're getting out of your grinder, your level of humidity, how the coffee clumps and how it's flowing and channeling, you may find this to be a useful tool to get a good consistent bed. What I find even more useful is this. This is referred to as a distributor. And this is a combination distributor tamper, but I don't use the tamper side, I only use this, the distribution side. And what this is, is a series of cams. This whole thing is adjustable. You can loosen the lock ring and then adjust the depth. And there is a set of graduations here on the side. Um, and so that what you, what you can do is this ridge will ride on the edge of the portafilter and this cam will smooth out the coffee. So all you do is set this on top and spin it and these ridges will take the coffee that's usually mounted in the middle and it will push it out to the edges and it will spread it and leave a nice flat surface ready to tamp. And I find this really useful because if I just throw the coffee in here and try to tamp it, what will often happen is places where the coffee happen to be piled higher out of the grinder will be compacted more and there'll be other areas that are compacted less. The water will follow the path of least resistance and it will channel through the puck. And so what you'll end up doing is over extracting certain areas of the puck while other areas are under extracted and you get a really gnarly tasting shot. It's both sour like it's under extracted and overly bitter like it's over extracted at the same time. And so getting good distribution is very helpful and I find that this tool, and this one's a pretty inexpensive one from Amazon. Um, makes a huge difference in getting a consistent puck preparation. So I think we've talked about all of the equipment now. Let's talk about the coffee itself. Now there is a big difference between coffee that was roasted and bagged and shipped and has been sitting on a store shelf for a long time and coffee that is fresh roasted. This is my local coffee roaster, uh, Dawson Taylor, and I actually go right down to the roasting plant. They have a coffee shop there and they sell the beans right out of the bins that came out of the roaster and they sell it the same day. So this particular one, uh, this particular bag of beans was roasted on March 25th, which was two days ago. So these are just about ready to use. Uh, ideally, I think you want um, with espresso or with coffee in general, your peak time to use the beans. If they're not you know, vacuum packed, you can get a little bit more time out of them. But it's typically between about four days after roasting and 14 days after roasting. So we're a little bit early on these. Uh, these probably need a couple more days. The roasting process releases carbon dioxide and a lot of that gets trapped in the beans. And over those first few days, some of that will escape. 
and it will make it easier to control the brew because you get less bloom or, or less crema on the espresso. Uh, but then after about 14 days is sort of the point at which you start to first uh, be able to taste the effects of staling. Now with good storage, it can last longer than that. And that is the purpose of these canisters. Coffee in general, you want to store in the whole bean state if you can, and you want it stored in the dark away from light and away from air. And these airscape containers uh, work really well for that. So this has got a cover with a gasket on the lid, but then inside it has an inner lid that presses down on top of the coffee. So the coffee beans are down here in the bottom and then this has a valve in it. So it has a rubber seal, so you press it down and that forces air up out through the handle and then when you press the handle down, it seals. So press that down and now there is basically no air. There's no head space in the bottom of the container over the coffee. Press the handle down like that and now it's sealed. Now, as carbon dioxide releases from the beans, it can escape. But in general, this is going to prevent fresh air from getting to the coffee. Put the lid on it and you can store it. And these come in all different colors, so you know you can, that's important to you. Now this particular roast is a medium roast espresso. You can see there's a nice rich brown color to the beans. These are not black. Um, a lot of people think that the darkest roasts are the best for espresso, like an Italian roast, um, but they get really dark and oily, so the oil tends to gum up the grinder and everything, but also all you really taste is smoke. You get this real smoky character and not a lot of the bright coffee flavors. With a, uh, a medium roast like this, you have a much better shot at getting a nice, warm, nutty, um, rich, sweet cup of espresso, and that's what I prefer, and so these are the beans that I use. Now that's the equipment and the coffee beans. The other component in espresso is, of course, water. And the water matters. In fact, the vast majority of what you get out of a coffee machine is the water that you put in it. So the general rule of thumb is don't use water to make coffee that you wouldn't want to drink. Generally, this means you want to use filtered water. You can use bottled water, but uh, it's a lot more economical and environmentally friendly to just use a, a water filter to get a good quality water. If your tap water tastes good, that's fine as well. Now, unfortunately, that's not where it ends when it comes to coffee because the mineral content of the water makes a big difference on how the coffee beans extract. The process of making coffee is going to dissolve between 20 and 30% of the coffee bean into solution. And how those complex compounds in the coffee get dissolved into the water really depends on the mineral content that is already in the water. You get differential extraction, you get different rates of dissolving of the different compounds in the coffee depending on what the mineral content already is in the water. And this is a very, very complex topic, but it turns out there's a cheat code. There's a company called Third Wave Water that makes these packets of minerals. And they have formulas for a bunch of different uh, types. This is the espresso. Uh, the one that they make specifically for espresso, and all these are are little packets of minerals to go into distilled water. So if your water is not good and you don't have good control or you can't get good water, you can always just buy distilled water and add one packet of these minerals per gallon and get a water with exactly the right mineral content to get a good quality espresso extraction. And so this is an option that is available if your water is not good. I've been playing around with it. I think my tap water's fine. I've got a filter in my refrigerator that I use and that's worked for me for years, but I decided to give these a try and eh, the results are pretty good. When this box runs out, I will switch back to my filtered water and see if I can tell a difference. And if I can, you know, we'll see. The jury's still out, 
but uh, you should know that this is an option if the water where you live isn't particularly good. So I think we're about ready to pull some shots. Let's talk about specifically what we're trying to accomplish. I want to pull a double ristretto. Now let's talk a little bit about brew ratios and what that means. A traditional espresso is a brew ratio of about one to two, which means for one part coffee by weight, you get two parts by weight finished espresso. So in this case, I'm gonna put 20 grams of coffee in the basket. A traditional espresso would be a 40 gram double shot. Now, I don't prefer that. I find that a little bit bitter and I prefer to go on the sweeter side. So I like to do a ristretto shot, which is less volume through the coffee in the same amount of time. So I will do a one to 1.5 ratio. About is where I find the sweet spot is for this particular bean and the particular milk and my particular tastes. And so I will use 20 grams of coffee and attempt to pull a 30 to 35 gram double shot. Now to control that and, and get that to work, we have a couple of variables we can control. The temperature is set by the machine. You can reprogram it. I haven't bothered. I haven't found that I needed to. The pressure is controlled by the machine. And so what we can control is the grind size and the time. I really want the shot to pull in 25 to 30 seconds. That's the time I'm looking for. If you end up choking it and flowing the same amount of water over a much longer period of time, that affects the flavor. If the water goes through too quick, that affects the flavor. And uh, so I find that the 25 to 30 second range is about right. And so then to control the amount of volume that you get out, you have two variables. You have the grind size, which we already talked about. You can go finer to slow it down, coarser to speed it up, but you can also finely adjust the amount of coffee that you put in the portafilter. You put in a little bit more, it ends up a little bit more compressed, and that slows it down. And we're talking tenths of a gram kind of resolution, which is one of the reasons why we weigh everything. Okay, this particular grinder has a hopper and you can fill up that hopper and leave your beans in it. I prefer not to because I would like the beans to stay fresher in a sealed container. So we'll weigh out just the beans that we need for this shot. Turn on my scale here and tear that out. And I'm going to want 20 grams of beans. So I'm going to grind maybe 21. So let me weigh out 21 grams here, 21.2, that is close enough. Put those in the grinder. Now I'm gonna grind directly into the portafilter and I want to precisely weigh what ends up in the portafilter. So I will put this on the scale with the funnel and tear that out so that after I grind, I can see exactly what I have. Now let that run for a few seconds after it's done grinding to let the grounds fall out, see what we've got. 21.2, so I'm going to just pull a little bit out and I'm going to hit, I'm going to try to hit right about 20 grams. So there we are, 20 grams exactly. Now I will kind of shake this to spread it out here. Usually it's a little looser and now we need to distribute. So this is in here and you can see it's definitely not even and that is the point of the distributor and I should be able to just put this in, spin this until it's level, until it shoulders out on the, on the sides of the portafilter and we get it nice and level and now we tamp. And for the tamp, I'll just press down till it bottoms, release the pressure, and I like to give it a little polish right at the top. And you can see 
that produces a very nice flat level puck. It's level across because of the distributor and we have a nice consistent tamp because of the spring-loaded tamper. Now we can just lock that in and pull our shots. But we're not gonna pull the shots directly um, into a cup. We're gonna actually put the cup on a scale so that we can monitor the mass as it's coming out. This way we can pull it a little faster or a little slower, uh, or excuse me, we can run it a little long or we can cut it a little bit short to try to hit exactly what we're trying to target. Okay, I've got my cup under here. I will tear that out. And this scale also has a timer built into it in addition to the timer on the machine itself. So I'll hit the button, this will run for 25 seconds. The moment the first drop falls in the cup, the timer on the scale will start and it will start weighing. And again, my target is 30 to 35 grams of coffee in 30, 25 to 30 seconds. And we will just give this a shot and see what we get. And there's the first coffee coming out. And it looks like we overshot our 30 grams slightly. And we hit about 34 grams in 26 seconds. Now, I personally prefer this as an iced coffee, so I'll drop this over about eight ounces of whole milk. And that is that. It's nice. It's got some sweetness to it. It's got some kind of nuttiness to it. Um, there's not really much smoky, roasty. There's very little bitterness. This is, a, this is a very nice balanced ice latte. I just need to get some ice and then it'll be a nice latte. One last note as you're dialing in your espresso is to look at the puck afterwards. Now, in this case, this puck looks relatively dry and that's because this uh, has a uh, release valve in the coffee machine so that after, when, when it shuts off, it releases the pressure and any moisture that's on top of the cup ends up going out through a tube down into the drip tray. But when you knock the puck out, this is when you find out how well you really did. If the puck holds together, you're in pretty good shape. And in this case, yes, it did come out. I just broke it. But it's a nice solid puck. It isn't a soupy mess. It isn't a bunch of powder. Uh, this is a good result. Well, that's all there is to it. I know it's a simple thing, but sometimes the simple things are the most important. Maybe next time we'll tackle ramen and see if I can anger as many Japanese people as I just did Italians. Thank you for watching.